On July 25, 1976, a single frame transmitted from Mars stopped scientists in their tracks. At a press briefing, project scientist Dr. Jerry Soffin announced the find, but immediately dismissed it, claiming that a second photo showed nothing and that it was all just a trick of light and shadow. In 1976, NASA took a picture that would ignite a mystery spanning decades. A face, nearly a mile long, staring back at us from the red planet. Was it a monument from a lost civilization? A message across the stars? Or just a trick of light and shadow? Standing on the surface of Mars, I, it's as if I, as if close to ever come to stand on the surface of Mars, and I'll be looking out there and I suspect seeking or expecting, hoping to see objects that are of, of real interest. Well, what's an object of, of, of real interest? I guess that's the excitement. We don't really know. The story begins not with a mystery, but with a mission. The year is 1976. Humanity's ambition, written in fire and steel, it reached across the solar system. NASA's Viking 1, a marvel of engineering, wasn't just on a sightseeing trip. Its prime directive was to find a safe harbor, a potential landing site for its sister craft, which was poised to become the first human-made object to successfully operate on the Martian surface. As it passed over a northern region called Sidonia, it snapped thousands of images. They were then beamed back the nearly 200 million miles to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. Most of the photos showed exactly what they expected. A cratered, ancient, and lifeless world. But then there was frame 35A72. An engineer flagged it as a curiosity. NASA released the image to the public a few days later with a caption describing it as a trick of light and shadow. They thought that would be the end of it. They were wrong. The image was released and exploded into public consciousness. It was simply too compelling to ignore. A powerful belief began to form that we were not just looking at a neighboring planet, we were looking at the ruins of a lost civilization. But the story of the face was only the beginning. For some, it was the gateway to a much deeper and far more complex mystery. The story of the face didn't end with a single photograph. It became the cornerstone of a much larger theory championed by author and researcher Richard C. Hoagland. To lay out specifically why the Sidonia problem, the face on Mars problem, the pyramid problem at Sidonia is different from UFOs, is in fact science, is in fact testable. And then he demands, implores, that the next mission's going back, i.e. surveyor, pathfinder, sure. the Russia 96 missions, they take the photographs to once and for all resolve this issue, which would be fine if we could trust the agency taking the pictures, but we can not. Hoagland and his associates argued that the face was far more than a simple illusion. They pointed to a second image, 70A13, which, though taken at a different sun angle, seemed to confirm the bilateral symmetry revealing a matching eye on the shadowed side. But. The face, they argued, was not an isolated monument, but instead was just one part of a vast ruined city complex. Nearby, they identified other key structures, most notably a massive five-sided formation they named the DNM Pyramid. This is where the theory goes from simple observation to complex mathematics. Hoagland claimed that the placement and angles of these structures were not random, he argued they contained a deliberate, repeating mathematical message. Proponents pointed to specific angles within the DNM pyramid and alignments between the structures that seemed to encode mathematical constants, ratios that were incredibly close to the square root of 2, the square root of 3, and even e divided by pi. To Hoagland, this wasn't just geometry. It was a coded message. A message he claimed was related to what he called hyperdimensional physics, a revolutionary form of physics that could explain everything from free energy to interstellar travel. We believe now that we are looking at the outlines of a whole new physics, how the universe functions, kind of a grand unified theory as it were. 
The claim was now immense, not just a face, but a city, a pyramid, and a complex mathematical message left by an ancient, hyper-advanced civilization. It's an extraordinary theory, but is it supported by extraordinary evidence? It is a compelling story, layered with mystery and complex mathematics, but a story, no matter how compelling, is not the same as scientific evidence. So, to solve this mystery, we have to turn away from the story and look at the science. And starting that investigation, we need to look at the single piece of evidence that started everything. The original photograph. The first limitation was resolution. The Viking camera could see objects at a resolution of about 43 meters or 141 feet per pixel. To put that into perspective, a single pixel in this image covers an area about the same size as the largest Boeing 737s. That means that if you somehow placed one of these planes on the surface of Mars and this little orbiter took a picture, the plane would be completely hidden inside one tiny individual pixel. The second and most critical limitation was lighting. The Viking 1 orbiter happened to fly over this exact spot when the sun was extremely low on the Martian horizon. It wasn't a face that was captured. It was a specific pattern of light and shadow projected onto a mountain. For 22 years, the debate raged based on the single flawed image. Then, in 1998, humanity sent a new set of eyes to Mars, and this is what it saw. The new data was undeniable. Where there was once a soft, symmetrical face, there was now a rugged, complex, and clearly natural geological formation. The eyes, nose, and mouth were revealed to be nothing more than the peaks and valleys of a heavily weathered mountain. But what about the geometry, the mathematical message? When mathematicians analyzed the claims, they found the exquisite relationships were not so exquisite after all. Critics pointed out that with enough data points, you can find patterns anywhere. The model was contradictory and the probability arguments were fallacious. It was described by one mathematician as a propaganda tool used to fool an audience, not convince scientists. The answer to what you're seeing isn't on Mars, but inside our own minds. It's a well-documented psychological phenomenon called pareidolia. Pareidolia is our brain's hardwired tendency to see familiar patterns, especially faces, in random or ambiguous data. It's an evolutionary survival instinct. We are the descendants of the paranoid. And sometimes that ancient software makes us see meaning where there isn't any. So when we assemble all of the evidence, the complete story of the face on Mars becomes clear. It began with a single low resolution photograph taken at a specific time of day, creating a powerful illusion. That illusion was then amplified by our own brain's powerful pattern matching software and woven into a complex mythology of pyramids, cities, and coded messages. But when subjected to the rigor of the scientific method, when better data was gathered, when the mathematics were scrutinized, and when our own cognitive biases were understood, the verdict became clear and unambiguous. The face on Mars and the city of Sidonia are natural geological formations, and the geometric claims are a product of our search for patterns, not the product of an intelligent design. The story of the face on Mars isn't a story of a lost civilization. It's the story of our civilization, of how our relentless curiosity, powered by ever-improving technology and the rigorous process of science, allows us to solve the universe's greatest puzzles the universe is full of wonders. The more we understand the science, the better we can tell the difference between a genuine mystery and a trick of light and shadow.